I'm Alex Polizzi, and I worked in top hotels for over 20 years. I don't know quite what I was expecting, but not this skanky old dog. But as the hotel inspector, I've also seen the worst. There's about five years' worth of dust on that. I've just passed a nice big poo. Now in my tenth year, I'm turning up the heat. Clearly what I need to do is maybe punch him once or twice in the face. What on earth is that abomination on my bed? Well, it's just a kind of bonkers setup, and it has to stop now. I was in a really good mood, you know, once upon a time. If they don't want my help, I'm out. Do you want me to be here? I will go. And if you don't want me to come back, I won't. <sighs> if they don't like home truths, Four. too bad. The rooms are dirty, and I'm not going to stay tonight. This year, I'm in no mood to mince my words. <sighs> this, for me, would be a hotel of last resort. It feels perfectly pleasant, but completely forgettable. As I battle to bring them back from the brink. So struggling with this. This time, have I finally met my match? I've travelled halfway across the UK to get here. When two novice hoteliers in need of a wake-up call... Did you not sleep well? This is a bit early in the morning. Give me the cold shoulder. If they don't want me to be here, then I won't come again. I have come north up to the Scottish borders. It's an area I don't know at all. I'm on my way to the Horse and Hounds in Bonchester Bridge near Hoyk. An hour's drive south of Edinburgh, the Horse and Hound has stood in the remote hamlet of Bonchester Bridge for over 300 years. But in the hands of newlyweds and novice hoteliers Rosa and Daniel, for just a matter of weeks. Oh, yeah. This is sausage, because it's a very silly sausage. The traditional nine-bedroomed inn with restaurant was a present to the couple from Rosa's generous father, Charles. It'll be too much to take in now, but I have to teach you how to use the till. He bought the horse and hound 18 months ago as an investment for Rosa and decided to have a go at running the place himself. See these hanging lights? Yeah. Oh, yeah, OK. It was a, a present from Dad. Now he's convinced Rosa and Daniel to move in and run their very own business for themselves. I thought he was a little bit crazy uh, and didn't really want it. But just two weeks in and with little experience... Yes. I, I don't like talking to people. The new owners are having to adapt fast. I mean, we've only just learned to turn the lights on. Like, we have no idea where anything is. No, I've gone into men's toilet. <laughs> At least Keen Baker and budding chef, Rosa's husband, Daniel, is keen to make a go of the restaurant. We're just making the neeps and tatties. I'm going to try and just really keep it simple so that we can't mess it up too much, mm -hmm. hopefully. But with Charles having only managed to keep occupancy just above 50%, it's not a great living at the moment. It's, I guess for these kids, it won't be a great living. He hopes I can help turn this place around by giving Rosa and Daniel a crash course in hospitality. I think someone like Alex coming along and telling them, hey, guys, right, this is what I think you should do and I think this is what the place should look like will be a really helpful exercise. So I've looked on the website and it says that I can check in from 2 o'clock. So I'm going to get straight in there and make the most of my day. When I finally arrive at the bright pink pub, it's half past two in the afternoon. I've just passed a nice big poo. Careful of the poo. It's been a long drive and it's cold, so I just want to get inside. Well, here it says opening hours. 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 But is that the pub or the rooms? Surely you can check in before 5. The website says 2 o'clock. When I do get inside, it appears I'm not the only one who's confused. Hello, hello. Hello. Are you Rosa? I am. I'm Alex. Polizzi. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm still in my pyjamas. I was not expecting you this soon. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm Alex. Nice so to nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello.
I, I've caught her in her PJs. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Wearing a kangaroo onesie. Very, very glamorous, yeah. darling. <laughs> it appears I've caught Rosa on the hop. Well, I'm here to stay the night. Yeah. Is that all so, right with yes. you guys? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thanks. I would love right. to. Thank you, yeah. Charlie. Rosa may not have been prepared for my arrival. Right, up these stairs. But at least my Scary room bits. is. A standard double en suite priced at £75 per night. Now, this is room number two. So I think what uh, I'll do is I'll get myself settled okay. in and then Great. I'll come back down and Perfect. chat to you. Great. This isn't bad. It's fairly clean, which is, again, a relief after some of the places I've had to stay. There's a bath mat. I mean, who knew I would get so excited about a bath mat these days? This is not a bad standard. Um, and actually, downstairs seems quite nice. So I need to have a really good look around and work out, you know, where the place is falling down. But I don't have to look far, judging by the decor in the next room. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Exhibit D, Your Honour. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I mean, honestly, uglier than that, I have literally, virtually never seen in my life. I can't believe that a 24-year-old and a 23-year-old have been given this place to run and own and aren't taking it a bit more seriously. Well, I definitely wasn't expecting to be in my kangaroo onesie when she came through the door. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's fine. Yeah. I prefer to be in a onesie at 2.30 uh, in the afternoon. It kind of seems like a bit of a joke, the whole thing. Perhaps Charles can explain why he thought buying the horse and hound for Rosa was such a good idea. So Rosa and Dan have now been here a few weeks. They've officially taken over. Yeah, I'd rather drop them in at the sort of deep end. Uh, well, when you, when sink you, or swim. Sink or swim. Have you ever done hospitality? So, no, I haven't. So, no. So I'm is not, that why I'm here? That's why you're here. I, I, you know, uh, I've done my bit, kids. Fingers crossed, off you go. OK, I can understand Charles's plan of calling on my expertise to give Rosa and Daniel a crash course in hospitality management. But in this game, commitment and enthusiasm help breed success. So how does Rosa feel about being drawn into Dad's grand plan? What vision do you have for the place? Well, the idea was that we would definitely put as much effort as we could into this for a year and then look at, look at where we were at and then decide whether or not we wanted to continue. OK. I mean, well, I think that's perfectly reasonable, darling. You're young. Yeah. I just want to know that while we're working together, we're going to try and you know, really give it 100%. Because otherwise it's yeah. just, you know, it's hard for me to be enthusiastic yeah. if you're not. Yeah. Um, and it's hard for me to kind of buy into mm. it and care unless you kind of yeah. enthuse me. Yeah. Because it is yours. Yeah? Yeah. Though Charles wants Rosa to quickly start making a profit from the business, I'm not sure she's as keen as he thinks and get the impression there's more to this than meets the eye. After a good night's sleep, I'm ready for breakfast. Well, the over-enthusiastic dogs are already in residence, so I assume so are the owners. Perhaps not. So while I wait to be seated, it's a good opportunity to give the dining area the once-over. What the fuck is actually happening in here? You've got one half-decent table full of crumbs, and then you've got this abomination here. Just cut the foam down so it actually fits, fits the benches. Cover it with the material. The lack of attention to detail is really starting to bother me. But at least it seems I can now be served breakfast. Did you not sleep well? This is a bit early in the morning. Is it? <laughs> oh. Does it matter where I sit? No, not really, no. Thank you. I mean, you know, do they realise that we're filming here? How thick should I cut the bread? Oh, yeah. Cut it thick enough for the toaster. Where's the toaster? <laughs> I 
Is this your bread? No. Yes. yes. No. Oh my gosh. How exciting. Um, Thank you. I beat it at, well, we beat it to that uh, one o'clock this morning. Did you? So you yeah. were up late? Yes. Which might explain. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, love. Daniel's hearty homemade breakfast is no dog's dinner. Go away. No. But try to link that to my uninvited guests. Get off me, you horrible dogs. Daniel? Daniel, call off the dogs, cos I find it very disturbing having them sitting around at my feet. Thank you, darling. Very, very nice breakfast. I get the feeling I've got a big problem on my plate. You know, I can't be here and be all enthusiastic and gung-ho and suggesting solutions unless they want me to be here. I think, you know, whether I'm here or not, they have to pull their fucking fingers out. I will always put 100% effort into helping struggling hoteliers, provided I get that in return. But I don't think I'm getting that here. That's it, that's it. Before we go any further, I need to make sure we're all committed and ready to charge in the same direction. I'm not convinced that you certainly, Rosa, are really massively into this plan. If you are going to do it, you have to get up, you have to be bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. I want to see a bit more kind of vim and vigour. I mean, why is everything a little bit dirty? Why are the tables not crumbed? The fact that the timings are different on the website and the door. Why don't you cut down the bloody foam to size? Why is everything a little bit shit everywhere? There's not the kind of basic graft. I mean, I love your bread, it's delicious, but is that what you should really be focusing on right now? Yeah. No. I salute your desire to turn your own butter in the long term, but do I care about it now? I don't give a flying fuck. You know, at the moment, I have seen nothing that says to me, oh my gosh, this is a success waiting to happen. Please tell me. I mean, do you think that's unfair of me? Do you think that's an unfair criticism? I agree that we haven't um, invested enough time in like running this place yet. We haven't really gone full heart into it yet. What do you think? Rosa, tell me. I want to hear from you. Do you want me to be here? Do you not want me to be here? I mean, I'm happy if you say no, you don't, darling. I won't take it personally. Well, it was his idea, not mine. Yeah. But... To have me here? Yeah. I will go, and then you guys can have your conversation and work out whether it is worth it to you or not. <laughs> and if you don't want me to come back, I won't. There's been a bewildering turn of events at the Horse and Hound. What the fuck is actually happening in here? After I was called by Charles to help new owners, his daughter Rosa and her husband Daniel. It kind of seems like a bit of a joke, the whole thing. I'd not been there 24 hours when I had to walk away, leaving them with a big decision. Do they really want my help or not? And if you don't want me to come back, I won't. A week later... Hi. ..and it's decision time. How are you two? Yeah, very well, thank you. Honey. Yeah, thank you. So it's crunch time. Do you want me to come back or would you rather drop it? Um, I think that we've decided that... ..we're going to try and do it ourselves... ..with less... Less idea, pressure. Less pressure, yeah. OK. Uh, it wasn't quite what we were looking for, I think. Yeah. Okay. Wow. There's no hard feelings at all, and I wish you every bit of luck. Thank you. And um, I hope you do really, really well. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Exactly. Bye, darlings. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I can't say that that was entirely unexpected, if I'm honest. You know, I'm too long in the tooth to try and help people in spite of themselves. In all the time I've been doing this job, I've never had anyone refuse my help. But good luck to Rosa and Daniel. I'm simply going to take my expertise and go somewhere that it is appreciated. OK, take two. 
I'm now heading to Cambridge, home to 50,000 cyclists, over 350 punts, and one woman who really does need and want my help. Hello. Uh, yeah, speaking. Oh, that's gone. <gasps> Gosh, not working. For the past seven years, Lithuanian-born Inga has leased and run the Tennyson Towers. Mm? An eight-bedroom guest house in the city centre. Good. Okay. Lipstick. How do I look? <laughs> I started as a cleaning lady. I know all corners, all bits and pieces, what's happening. I know every single squeaking floor. Oops. Now I can't open the doors. But her passion for the place began 18 years ago, when the previous owner, Frances, gave her a job and soon became a dear friend. She was a beautiful person, caring, loving. She was my best friend. <clears throat> Frances died a couple of years ago. I'm still clinging to her. Since then, Inga and Tennyson Towers have been paralyzed by the past. We preserved everything what was before. It's her print, it's her everything, you know, her ideas, how she wanted me to run, and it's imprinted, you know. This one has really nice karma. But with a fixed monthly lease to pay, and with Tennyson Towers falling behind the times, Inga can sometimes struggle to take any profit from the business. For example, December, okay, after I paid uh, rent and I paid all bills, I left with nothing. <laughs> Unable to break from the past, Inga's struggling to see a brighter future. Desperate to breathe new life into the crumbling Tennyson Towers, Inga has called me in. I feel like a little chick, you know, in the, in the eggshell. And I'd like to her to be the person who comes and <laughs> breaks the eggshell and lets me fly. Let's hope this time I'm here to stay. <laughs> oh, hi, hi, hello, coming in, coming in, welcome. Thank you, hi, welcome. how are you? Inga. Welcome. Oh, look at it, so how are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming. Good, I'm so happy to be here. All right, okay, coming in. Okay, good. Yes, it's, uh... Now that's what I call an enthusiastic welcome. Inga's occupancy averages above 60%, which isn't bad. Okay, here's room number three, three. okay probably help by charging just £60 per night room only for a double ensuite. But one look at the old-fashioned decor quickly explains the budget price. I would like to change, but I'm scared to change. Yes. Because um, everything was Frances. Frances was like my stepmom, like a friend. So this is how she decorated yes. it? Yes. Everything is in the same place as she left. It's okay, darling. Oh. Darling, because you care so much, I, you're going to make me care so much. So, you know, it's really nice to see that it matters to you so much. It's endearing seeing Inga wear her heart on her sleeve, but I'm already sensing this won't be a straightforward fix. Please let me know if you need anything. Okay, okay. thanks. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Gosh, clearly Frances was almost like a mother figure. And I'm sure it must have been a very close friendship because to stay 18 years in any place is, is remarkable. I think I've just touched the surface of it tonight. Well, I won't sleep tonight, definitely, you know. I just, you know, just so excited to see what Alex is going to suggest because I really want, you know, to succeed and be proud of this place. And I hope, you know, that, yeah, everything will be okay. I hope, I really hope, I don't think I hope. Yes, she had a good sleep. I've spent most of the night and the morning thinking, what would I do to make this room less awkward? I mean, it all feels kind of quite squashed in. But there has to be a better way than this to do it. But it's not so much the lack of space that really bothers me. It's what's squeezed in it. 
three mirrors in a room, I would say. I mean, much as I love looking at myself. <laughs> uh, and I can in this room from every angle at all times. Why is it not on the ceiling? It's clear that these are not recent decorating decisions. This room I really don't like. It's kind of been so badly planned and it's kind of shoehorned in. I mean, you don't have to be a great genius to know that this bedroom just doesn't work like this. I think there needs to be a really root and branch thought about what they do here, rather than just a kind of make do and mend, which I imagine is the kind of ethos prevailing. Inga already has good occupancy, but she's not making money. She needs to be able to charge more for her room, so she will need to update them. But it's not just the room decor which has fallen behind the times. Really basic breakfast. I think people expect more than that these days. I think it's evidence of a kind of bygone era, basically, of that kind of ethos that's stayed since the days when Francis was running the place. To help keep the place running smoothly, Inga employs housekeeper Helen, who cooks and serves breakfast daily. There we go. Thanks, darling. You are very welcome. Lovely. Okay. Have you been busy, not busy? So my breakfasts can vary. As you see, I've had one. Yeah. And even sometimes if we've got a full house, I can still have nobody for breakfast. With an additional charge of £7.50 for a bygone breakfast, it's no surprise guests aren't tucking in. A better breakfast could entice more people to eat here and be great extra income. It's something I'll need to tackle, along with the rooms and building's exterior. The sign just depresses me enormously. It's so old-fashioned. And what is this rubbish, Tennyson Bloody Towers? What's tower-like about this? And the awning is awful. It's faded. And red is not a good exterior decorating colour, I must say. All in all, it isn't a first impression to inspire confidence. After 10 years doing this job, I'm very aware that hotel and B&Bs are just as vulnerable to closing down as the great British pub. You have to move with times. Stand still in this industry and you'll be left behind. And with over 200 places to stay in Cambridge, there's stiff competition, some right next door. Oh, Venice. Looks very smart. Much more professionally set out, much more boutique than uh, the Tennis and Towers offering. Standard double, £79 a night, so they're charging about £19 more than Inga can manage. And you can see why. I think the name is working against her. I think the decor is working against her, but she can still make it a more popular, cheap option just by making it nicer. It should be providing her with a decent income. She does have all the stress and strain of it, and she should also get the reward of it. Inga has a good occupancy rate, so the best way to increase profits is to increase room rates. I can only do that if the business can move with the times and Inga break her emotional ties with the past. And also, I mean, I've clearly got to work out what the hell I'm going to do with that place, because the rooms are small. I mean, Bijou isn't the, isn't the half of it. And, um, and, it's, and it's going to be a complicated project. And moving forwards could be tougher than I thought. So far, so not really good. <laughs> when Inga's curiosity gets the better of her. I really don't like this. It's just not me. The Tennyson Towers in Cambridge is firmly stuck in the Stone Age. It's so old-fashioned. It isn't a first impression to inspire confidence. I would like to change, but I'm scared to change. Yes. I've not spent much time with Inga, but I already know I've got my work cut out if I'm to convince her to move on from the past. Inga was very emotional last time I saw her, I think it's fair to say. I mean, her eyes were full of tears the whole time. Um, it's obviously a very emotive issue, tennis and towers, and the changes that need to be made, I need to handle quite sensitively, I feel. 
kickstart that change, I've brought Inga to London. She now leases Tennyson Towers from the current owner, James, Francis's son. So I've also invited him along as I hear he's keen to help with improvements. I think there needs to be a real blueprint for, for moving forward. I want to show you the, um, something that's a budget hotel that still is very much in your range, but that I think shows you where the budget industry is going, OK? <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right, let's go. Come on, come with me. I've brought them to the Kip Hotel in Hackney, where not only are the rooms relatively cheap, they're highly modern and make the most of a small space. So this, my dears, is what they call a super single. Come in. Oh, it's tiny. It is single. What it's focused on is giving you a decent sized bed, a little desk, room to put a suitcase, television, mm -hmm. and a very, very nice bathroom. So £37 a night, you get quite a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, I, I like it. It gives a sense of space. It's nice and clean and tidy, and uh, it works. So what do you think? It's really, really good, you know. Yeah, I like it. OK, let's go and see a bigger one. Follow me. Clever use of colours, furniture and lighting add a modern touch and should hopefully bring home to James and Inga how far budget hotels have come. So this is a standard double. Again, very, very plain. Black and white, very simple. A b and isn't a vanity thing. It should be a business. It's mm. got to be easy to run. It should make money. It should have high occupancy. And we yeah. want it to mm. be successful. I'm do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. And so that yes. means you have to make some quite hard decisions and try and remove the emotion from it yeah. and just do it on a really practical business basis. And I think, hopefully, if we do it like that, it'll be easier. Yeah, thank you. Inga seems to be making all the right noises. Follow me. But what about James? When Mum took over the, the property 20 years ago, it was almost the same kind of feeling that we have now. It needed to be changed. It needed to be brought into a new generation, if you like. It needed the end of an era of the previous occupants and, yeah. and owners. And it's come to that end of an era again. If you don't change, you run enormous risks of just becoming irrelevant. Yep, yep. Having owner James on board, wanting to give Tennyson Towers a modern makeover is good news for Inga. With a better standard of accommodation, she can charge more per room, which should give her more profit. I just hope she agrees to my plan. So I would like to give you a kind of clean template for how to move forward. But mainly, I would like a much cleaner look. I do think what is very important is just for us to, to make a step forward. Along with bringing the rooms into the modern era, I want them to think about how the business is seen by potential customers. You two have got to have a debate about changing the name. Because I think Tennyson Towers, it's not a tower. Most people don't know who Tennyson are. I think if you have to explain the reason for a name, you're already failing. And that would give us a chance to really look at how we brand the place at the front, at the signage, all of that, which is so important. Finally, with breakfast charged at £7.50, there is opportunity for Inga to make profit if she can encourage more guests to eat in. So I want her to overhaul the breakfast and offer something far more tempting. If you had 10 people a day have breakfast or whatever, mm. then actually that would be a significant <clears throat> asset. My plan is definitely a step in the right direction. I just hope Inga is committed to letting go of the past. I feel like we've moved it forward. There's a lot still to do. I need to get a shift on. And I'm immediately encouraged. Morning, James. As it appears my plan has quickly sunk in, with Inga wasting no time discussing a new name with James. I would like to keep tennis on towel, but you know, well, it's probably just because my clinging to the past. Do you know, we need to think something different. The instruction from Alex was to try to find a name which, which presented um, uh, uh, the experience. Mm -hmm. I think we need to brainstorm and have another thing. Mm -hmm. It's great. Uh -huh. OK, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Talk to you later. All thank right. you. See thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 I see this as an opportunity to rebrand the business and give Inga something to shout about. 
but I'm not sure Inga can do it on her own. So to help move things along with a name and a new image, I've brought Inga to meet some local brand gurus. Thank you. Come on through. Thank you, we will. Can we talk about the name mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of names, what a name should signify and what do you think? We did some we did some research, didn't we, into kind of search volumes of uh, you know. So basically, you know, when you're looking for something online, we were looking about how people were searching for accommodation in Cambridge. You know, Nikki, you you've got some. Oh, yes, interesting that's data interesting. Yeah. B and Bs do much better than guest houses in terms of what people are searching for. Good. So bed and breakfast it is. Personally, I think you look you, the best solution for you is to do something which is slightly evolutionary, which is essentially you know drop towers. I think you could do something nice with the Tennyson, you know the Tennyson, bed and breakfast. I love that. That's I love that, yes. With Inga sounding positive about her new name, the Tennyson bed and breakfast, I want to start thinking about her new brand image. What we've sort of looked at as some sort of earlier influences is kind of, you know, based on this kind of Scandinavian design, it's very simple. There's kind of lots of kind of um, high contrasting kind of neutrals with very bold colors. But just when all appeared to be moving forwards, you and then I will be cloned like all guest houses, all hotels, you know, exactly the same. You know, the, what is about England? Mm. What is about Cambridge? I would like to, you know, the show that is everything about Cambridge, you know, the people coming because of Cambridge. But I think, darling, you're forgetting that I'm in to improve the business side of things. And what people want and what people like is stylish, curated. You need something that packs more of a punch. The millennials and, and the younger generations, they're looking for this type of experience, you know, through, through their well, visual you know, culture. For the people, you know, who are uh, 50 years old, yeah, yeah. like myself, mm -hmm. or, you know, the people... Well, don't you who... like going somewhere? But that's a decreasing side. market. I would like to, but I would like to go with a little bit, you know, the, well, style, not like just black and white. What about a Cambridge blue? It's a Cambridge blue, you know, the colour was called. Yeah. OK, so well, I will give you a Cambridge blue. You can always go back. You won't, but you can always go back, you know? Yes, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> I think there has been progress. She takes a lot of pushing to get anywhere, but we both agreed about it being a bed and breakfast. I mean, I'm kind of pretty set on my path about the room. I will take on board her desire for a bit of Cambridge blue. Um, but I'm not really going to be swayed because I actually think I know better than her what the contemporary traveller expects. To complete the new image, I will also update the faded facade to inspire confidence with the first impression. Along with bringing the rest of the business up to date, I've asked Inga to give the old-fashioned breakfast a long overdue overhaul. Hi, hello. I'm just looking for some selection, you know, bread selection. They are different sizes, uh -huh. small or large. If Inga can entice more guests with the breakfast they are willing to pay for, it will be an opportunity for valuable extra income. You can uh, eat it with jam, marmalade, ham. So I've suggested she reaches out to some of the surrounding independent suppliers to think about using locally sourced ingredients and offer a breakfast to shout about. Right, OK, can we have one smaller size and sure. this, uh, another one, you know, and for we'll try. try. Uh-huh, thank you. Maybe you can negotiate the price or something, oh, you know. Yeah. But just when it seems Inga is making a giant leap forwards with a new name, image and breakfast in hand... I'm not sure you know about this. Her anxiety over my room makeover gets the better of her. Well, so far, so... not really good. <laughs> and has definitely darkened the mood. I I'm concerned about the carpets because it has to be lighter. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I really don't like this. It's just... Not me, absolutely. You know, it's just I'm coming and I'm somehow to feel claustrophobic. It's my final day at the Tennyson, where I've been helping Inga break her ties with the past. I'm aware she's had an early peek at my room makeover and was not happy. But I'm hoping today she sees the finished room as a new start and how the Tennyson can now become Inga's place. 
I really hope today Inga's going to realise that this is an opportunity to put a line under the past and move forward successfully. Hey, morning. Good morning, darling. How are you? Thank you. Well, how are you, my no, darling? Very well. The tired Tennyson had fallen behind the times and the competition. But now a modern facelift has replaced faded old red paint with a contemporary finish and a new sign which should now inspire confidence in any guest. Looks gorgeous, especially with the logo. You I know, like the, the logo. The logo is something, you know, the something, something what, new. Yeah. I'm so pleased about the name change. And they're still the same, but different. This is much more appealing to the modern traveller. And I think it's somewhere you'd want to stay. Yes. Yeah? I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> now we are where we are and we've got something to shout about. I've invited a local journalist along. We want to show that this is the next iteration of the Tennyson and that you're carrying on a proud tradition of someone who you love very much. And, um, and we'll put the Tennyson on the map. Yeah? Thank you. OK, let's go in. Thanks. It's great to see Inga's embrace the Tennyson's new exterior, but I'm slightly nervous as to how she'll react when seeing my fully finished room makeover for the first time. So I hope this is pretty and what you were hoping for. Give a moment. <laughs> quite, quite <laughs> it's nice. It's just a wow, you know? I love it, I love it. We've compromised with touches of Cambridge blue to pack a punch, adding a modern feel to the room and allowing Inga to move forward with Frances still in her heart. The stylish finish just goes to show budget doesn't always have to be boring. I know you found this process incredibly difficult. I was so worried when I saw black carpets. I, know. I thought, God, you know, every poor people will go to the black hole, you know, it will be like a rabbit hole, you know, what's going to happen, you know, and. And now look, I'm so embarrassed, but you no, know, I'm so as long grateful as, and thankful, you know. As long as you're happy. Okay, I mean, as long as we got there in the end, I'm glad. The thing that you've got to remember is that you asked me here to improve your business. And I think with nicer rooms, you can charge a little, even a tiny, a minuscule increase in rate. It makes a significant difference to your bottom line. £10 increase at 60% occupancy, that's £17,500 a year. So you must adjust your prices and the moments that you can grab it, you must make sure that you do. So you're happy. Oh, you're not course, disappointed. Of I am. This is No, you're not I am gonna say it. This is this is you know, this is now uh, the step that this is your place. And you know, hopefully Francis would be stop, happy. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> no, well I know, but darling, you know, this is a big change. So finally, this is an Inga room rather than a Francis room. Thank you. Pleasure. Good. Hopefully, this is such a break from the past that it is going to help her move on. She cannot help but get emotional every time she talks about Francis. But this is going to put a new stamp on the place and it's going to become more of her and less of Francis. And that's the normal way of things. With the room ready and the journalist on his way, I want to see how Inga's got on with her challenge to encourage guests with a new quality breakfast. Do you want to put some sausages on first? Oh, so right, then okay. we can try them. Oh, right, OK, good. Yeah. Can Make I put jam in here? Yes. Lots of people book here because she serves breakfast and many places don't. The problem is that not enough people eat her breakfast to really make it as viable as it should be. Oh, very nice. So to encourage as many people as possible to eat her breakfast and so that she can make a decent profit on that, we need to make it the best breakfast it can possibly be. Voila! Wow! And the gorgeous! To cement the idea in Inga's mind that this is all about her future, I've invited a local journalist who's agreed to release an article later today on Inga's story and the new Tennyson. I've also invited James from the brand agency to see the fruits of his labour, and I'm encouraged to see Francis's son James has arrived for support. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Thanks darling. I think the thing is that we just want to spread the word. 
um, about the Tennyson, what's happening here, and how much Inga and James have achieved. Wow. What do you think, guys? Oh, it's wonderful. It's beautiful, isn't it? The room, you know, the, which now represents me, you know, and the new, the Tennyson. Well, I think it's beautiful, and uh, yes, I'll be looking forward to writing about it in, uh, in a few hours, putting it up online. The piece, the transformation, about, you know, what it was and what it's become. <sighs> It's a great start. Let's hope the new locally sourced breakfast gives an equally good impression. Would you like to try to just, would you like to try with the differences, you know, just please, please try a little bit. I would like to show to my guests, you know, that here we are, come here, you know, welcome to the proper English breakfast with really nice sausages organic everything, you know, the, and everything homemade. You know, you look at that and then you look at that. So yeah, it's, 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 it's completely, completely different, different, different game, you know, the, mm. yes. Though Inga's decided not to increase her £7.50 breakfast charge, a more tempting offer should encourage more guests to eat yeah. here, which could mean more profit in Inga's pocket. Yeah, Very nice sausages. So pleased, you know, that such a relief. And now I can breathe, I can just can fly. <laughs> I went through a real emotional time. Now I'm not afraid, not embarrassed, and not too shy, you know, to show what who we are and how we are. I'm thrilled to see Inga has finally embraced a new future. And as I leave, James reveals a massive boost for Inga and the Tennyson, with imminent plans to follow my room makeover and refurbish the entire <gasps> building. So we're going to have to close the place down, December, January. Just some, yeah. I mean, I think this is an amazing plan. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. And it's going to really improve the premises. You know, the point is to drive revenue. And the way you drive revenue is by providing a nicer product. Mm. You've already got pretty high occupancy here. Yeah. yeah. So the only way to do that is by increasing your room rate. And the only way you can increase room rate is by giving a better product. Yeah. So I think that's a really clever thing yeah. to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Really oh, happy. Oh, okay. let's go together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> it's amazing to think that I started off in the Scottish borders and I ended up here in Cambridge. It's definitely been a roller coaster ride. And it's not long before the journalist's article in the Cambridge Independent is already beginning to spread the word. Look! Formerly Tennyson Towers, now known as the Tennyson, this charming guest house on Tennyson Road has already completely overhauled one of its bedrooms. A full refurbishment is to follow later in the year. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We did it. I hope what Francis would say, go for it, girl. <laughs> yes, just well done. This means, you know, a lot. Yeah. I, I hope she's proud.